Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man in the fight. Time after time. Born of his spirit, you am at the time, and washed in his blood, and what he did for me on Calvary is more than enough. Thank you, Jesus. So I trust in God, my Savior. Good evening, good evening. How's everyone doing? Thank you, Jesus. And thank you for joining me on this evening. It is a little cold outside for North Carolina, right? <laughs> Praise God. I ask that as you come in, if you would like, share, share to as many platforms as you can for me, I would greatly appreciate it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Perfect submission and all is at rest. All right. I know how's everybody doing out there today? Hello. Hold on, hold on. Thank you, Jesus. Hi, we took. Pookie, I'm going to try to stop calling you by your nickname. Hi, Tasha. What's up, Brother Ephraim? Hey, sister, my best friend, Stephanie. Hey, Kimberly. Hey, best friend, Val. Hi. Thank y'all for joining us. You know, as you come in, like, share, comment, come in with a praise. Thank you for joining us again on this evening. Today, I am totally excited about this awesome woman of God that I have had the pleasure of meeting in the short period of time that um, we did meet. Um, our spirits definitely connect. She's a powerful woman of God. And I'm so excited to come on and share this platform with her as she um, tell us about our ministry. I would like to welcome at this time, Lady J. Hey. hey woman of God. How are you? I am so excited. I'm good. I'm blessed on today. Hello to each and every person watching. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And I'm just, I'm ready for tonight. I was ready. You know, I, I came on 10. Come on. Me and the Holy Ghost came on 10. Amen. Amen. So Father God, we're going to go into a word of prayer. Heavenly Father Jehovah, we bless your holy and hollow name. For you are King of Kings. You are Lord of Lords. You are the great I am. And we acknowledge you on this evening, Father. You are he who was, he who is, and he who is to come. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this moment. We thank you for this space. We thank you for this platform where you can be lifted up to draw all men unto you, Lord. And Father, we are so grateful we thank you for everyone that's under the sounds of our voices, Lord. Those that are watching with us live, those that will catch the replay, Father, we ask you to continue to bless them, cover and keep them. And Father, we pray that you be edified, you be glorified in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. I want to introduce, um, this is a PK kid. I love it. Your mother was a pastor? She is, she is. She she is. Your, that's, forgive me. I'm, that's okay. awesome. That is awesome. So we have a woman of God, PK kid, a co-pastor of what God's Dominion and Power Ministries. Amen. An instrument, an instrument, and um, also an author. Yes. 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 Awesome. Awesome. How many books have you written? I've written a total of two and actually four, but I have two that I've released and two that are waiting release. Okay, that is awesome. That's awesome. And one thing um, you are drawn to and passionate about helping other women understand their power, their value to God, yes. and their responsibility to family and themselves. Yes, yes. 
along with the community of women of faith. So yes, ma'am, absolutely. Absolutely. So um, t- can you tell us about owning your womanhood? Absolutely. I'm so excited. Listen, Only Your Womanhood was a vision that God gave me actually several years ago, if you can believe it, woman of God. I mean, several years ago, literally. And I can remember when God began to speak to me about owning your womanhood. And I began to set it up as a blog at first. I thought, oh, maybe it's a blog. Mm -hmm. And God quickly let me know that's not what it was about. I took that down. I said, okay, it's not the time yet, but one day will be the time. And as God, I got challenged last year, um, man of God came to me and he said, listen, you, your voice needs to go out. Your, your voice needs to go out. And so I'm challenging you to come up with something that is going to begin to not just launch your ministry, but begin to do your God assignment to another level. And so it was as if someone turned on a light. And literally the first thing that came to my mind was owning your womanhood. And then I totally understood what God had been doing this entire time. Back about, I say about maybe six or seven months ago, I was at church. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was at church, I was at the altar. Um, A friend of mine was speaking and I was bowing my head and I was praying and tears was just streaming down my face. And God said, listen, He said, I will give you the ability to preach and be heard by the region, but you can't take the same things with you now that I'm getting rid of. Mm. And God began to show me how I was going to have to begin to own my womanhood at another level. God said, you can't take the clickish attitudes with you. You can't take the favoritism with you. You can't take the immaturity with you. You can't take the jealousy with you. You can't take the envy with you. You can't even take your unforgiveness with you. The things that you have strife about, you've got to deal with that before I can deploy you and actually begin to begin to do what it is that I've destined for you to do. So the challenge of only your womanhood, the vision came from the challenge in my own life. That God gave me to grow up and begin to step into my womanhood at another level. And so that's what God was doing this whole time. He was having me live it out so that when I began to launch the vision, it would be organic, organic, and it wouldn't be fake or forced. So that's what's behind the vision of owning a womanhood. That's how it was birthed. Oh, that is awesome. You know, one thing that um, you said all of those things that God said you couldn't take with you were good. And um, one of them that really st- stood out to me, especially when you're dealing with a group of people, is mm-hmm. the cliques. Yes. Or the favoritism. Yeah. You know, because how easy people will pick up on you leaning more towards, you know, a certain individual or a certain group of people mm-hmm. and how that could offend and leave them out. So and that causes a lot of church hurt. It does. You know, and a lot of people to um, leave ministries behind that, you know, that very thing and the forgiveness, the forgiveness, you know, like one of um, young ladies had uh, wrote in and asked you a question was yeah. how, why is self-forgiveness, why is self-forgiveness the hardest thing to do? Oh, my goodness. Listen, let me tell you, that's so layered. But 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 I'm so glad she asked the question. When you talk about self-forgiveness, listen, I have this thing. Um, One of the things that I do in my profession is that I'm a couple and family therapist. Right. And so I, I just want you to understand I'm full of the Holy Ghost, but I'm full of the understanding of the mind that God has given it to me. Right. And this ability to be able to counsel. And what I find is that when individuals deal with a lot of Self unforgiveness, it comes from an expectation that wasn't met within who they are. Mm. It also comes from a way that we tend to function unknowingly with punishing ourselves. We 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 have a tendency in a really um very, very incognito way to have this experience with ourselves that tends to be toxic at times, especially when we haven't done the work to clean it up. 
So self-unforgiveness normally comes with an uh, unmet expectation within yourself and a lack of fulfillment within who you are. That means that there were some things that I didn't meet. There were some things that, that, that perhaps you didn't do. And in that, within that relationship within yourself, it begins to break down. Um, you know, I hear people talk a lot, a lot of the time about forgiving other people and having this trust built with other people and beginning to establish these different things with other people. But it's just as important to make sure that those things are established inwardly so that there's a strong foundation of self-love because self-love isn't supposed to be and was never meant to be even per the word of God through conceit. Mm. It was supposed to be based on appreciation of what God created, which is you. That's why God says, love your neighbor as yourself. That was supposed to be the first measurement of love was you loving you because you would know how to love somebody else. But we've gotten that backwards and we sacrifice who we are and we've sacrificed loving us and forgiving us to do it with other people. And then there's this inward breakdown that ends up happening and this disconnection. So what we have to do to begin to forgive ourselves or be better at forgiving ourselves is giving ourselves permission to say, you know what? I can try again. It's okay. I can get back up again. To be able to appreciate who we are in its wholeness. We got to take another look in that mirror and really begin to admire what God has established in us and how God fashioned us. But yes, that's where we can start. That's where we can start. I love it. I got a little ahead of myself. Um, you have a master's degree in, could you um, tell me what your, your, you had a master's degree in com journalism, communications with a concentration in journalism community development uh -huh. so that, that is awesome so you are god ordained and skilled <laughs> yes ma'am yes ma'am so there i do i have a bachelor's in communications with a concentration in journalism and i actually hold two master's degrees one as a couple and family therapist and one in community development or urban planning some people call it urban planning urban planning okay that is awesome okay um i have a another question Yes, ma'am. All righty. How can I get animosity out of my heart when others mistreat you or when they constantly mistreat you? Are you not supposed to say anything? Ah, uh, that's so layered. Listen, I'm a very real person and I and a very real minister. Let me tell you one of the tragedies that I see often, um, Miss Tanya, when when people come into this animosity thing in their heart, especially as believers. We've been taught this really toxic way of dealing with animosity, which is we pray over it and then ignore it. Mm. We pray over the animosity and we try to ignore what's really going on in our heart. And one of the things that I find when I'm dealing with those that come into um, they come into my office, they want to say, oh, but I know God is going to make a way and I know God is going to forgive. But you're on my couch for a reason. Right. So right. although we know that God is able to heal the wounds, we know that he's close to the broken heart and we know that God is able. But God gives us a safe space. It's called prayer. Come on, amen. He gives us a safe space to go to him and really begin to deal with the things that are in our hearts. And I think that that's one of the things that we need to do when we have animosity is that we've got to be willing to deal with it in prayer. We've got to be willing to be genuine with God. That's a lot of the reason why also as believers, our relationship is so disconjointed with God. We have a lot of people trying to reach this, this, this epitome of, of relationship with God simply for the anointing and you're forgetting about the relationship. You're forgetting about the redemption. You're forgetting about the salvation. It's so much more than just merely being anointed to have a relationship with God. He's your father. He's your Abba. Come on. And so if he's all of that to deal with animosity, we've got to go to him and be willing to be honest. Facts. And we've got to be willing to open up and allow God, allow the 
spirit of God to speak to what's inside of us. Then we can be able to pray over it and watch the healing come together in a whole way and not do this little funny thing that we tend to do in the body of Christ where we say we forgive and we pray and then we see them and our face is like, and we got all this tension in our body, right? So, so one of the first things is confrontation, some real authentic confrontation in prayer with God, really allowing God to speak to what's going on in your heart, speak to what's going on within you, and then he will give you the steps to deal with it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Whenever um, about forgiveness, mm -hmm. like something being buried alive, when you truly haven't let go, and then once, like you said, once you see that person, you like, and you know, it just, you know, everything comes back up. You know, I was, I had a situation where me and this young lady, Whenever I first got to Dave, I was very, very overzealous. And I didn't realize at that time, you know, I was just excited about my testimony, what God had brought me from. And I was just really like, really like pushing. I wish you knew what I knew about God. You know, I was a right. little on milk. Um, and then I began to judge her unfairly in certain situations. And then God started bringing it right back to my door. The very thing that I would judge her on, I'm being met with it. Like, okay, what would you do? Um, and yeah. it took a couple of, you know, times before that humbled me. Yeah. Um, but that, that was like over 20 years ago, but we had gotten this little situation um, about three or four months ago. And it took me back 20 years and I had to go, back to the altar and reevaluate my heart and myself. Wow. There's no way that mm -hmm. one little situation instead of communicating, you know, so I took it to God in prayer with honesty. Yeah. You know, understanding the truth will set you free, but you got to be honest if it's nobody but you and God and relationship is so important. Yes. A lot of people that are, they're not making that time. You know, you just, you're going to church, you're just doing stuff in a routine. It, it could be religious, but if you're not making that time, yeah, to be in like in any relationship that you're in for single women, for us, it's a little bit more, we have more, more time on our hands to really right. spend with the Lord. So with that being said, like as a married woman, and let's say you're not married to a man of faith. Yeah. You know, how would she balance, you know, or how? what would you recommend or would your advice to her be as far as her relationship with God and mm -hmm. her unsafe husband? Well, first and foremost, let me say this. Do not women. OK, I love us. Amen. I love you. Just hear Lady Blake's heart when she's about to say but I, I really mean what I'm about to say. Women of faith, women who believe God, and you're with men who either, one, don't have as strong of a relationship as you do with God, or they may not have a relationship yet with God, right? Mm -hmm. Please do not make the mistake of comparing that man to God. He can't compete. He can't compete. I'm going to say it again. He can't compete. Amen. And one of the things that I know that women normally get confused, especially women of faith that are married, they're trying to win their husbands over. But unfortunately, in the process of trying to win them over, they continually in a very ungodly and an unwise way, judge their men against the things of God or against Jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Listen. Don't do that. Amen. Because there is nothing worse than being compared against someone you could never measure up to in that way. And what it does also is it demotes Jesus down to a very human understanding. And it almost depicts Jesus as competing with him and not saving him. So if we want to, as women of faith, be able to make an impact on a man or a husband that you are with that is not saved, comparing him 
by default demeaning him is not going to help. Amen. We're going to have to make sure that we constantly depict Jesus Christ as our loving Savior. He's a forgiver. Come on. He's a way maker. He, Jesus died on the cross for us. And on the third day, he rose again with all power in his hands. Come on. He's, he, he's the one who's making intercession for us right now, even in this very minute. Those are the things that we present. We present the grace of Jesus Christ and how he died. Amen. We don't we don't dummy it down to comparing him to, well, Jesus was a carpenter, so you should have a job. Come on. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> right. So, you know, let's be real. Let's not do that. Amen. Because you wouldn't want him to compare you to Jesus' mother. Come on. We let's you know, we, we, we wouldn't want that, right? It just seems right. so unattainable. We already have issues with dealing with Proverbs 31. Oh, all right, okay, amen. Come on. Come on, woman. <laughs> real because I don't have I don't have anything to lose in Jesus name but we already have enough problems trying to compete with Proverbs 31 and you want him to compete with the whole thing that Jesus did it ain't no 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 it ain't no ma'am <laughs> that was a rich so with helping the married ladies I have a lady uh, that's from a single lady okay um, she wants to know how to survive a relationship mm -hmm. without this physical intimacy Okay. Is it even possible for a relationship to work with mm -hmm. non-sexual intimacy? Okay. And she's single, correct? She's single. Okay. Awesome. Okay. It is possible for a relationship to work without sexual intimacy. Okay. But what's going to be really important is the focus of the relationship. That's going to be super important. The only reason that sex becomes such a big issue is when there's nothing else to focus on. And let me say this, when there's nothing else to focus on, then I'm going to question, then what is the purpose of the relationship? Because let me tell you something. I can tell you something being married for almost eight years now. And my husband just had a stroke. And I'm just telling you as a married woman who's having to adjust to the changes in our life physically right now. Our relationship has to be based more than on sexual intimacy. Absolutely. You hear what I'm saying? So yeah. even in these the, the baby stages of a relationship in a single woman and, and, and a single man that you're courting, there's so many more things to focus on. You, uh, th th How about focusing on how you want to raise kids? How about focusing on what's the purpose and the plan for your union? How about focusing on if you even want a union? Am I wasting my time? Because I may not have to worry about sexual, sexual intimacy if you're wasting my time. Come on. If you just ain't the one. Do you even know God? Come on on today. And, and, and I don't want to make this about men, uh, a woman saying that a man may have his mind in the wrong place. Sometimes we as women have our mind in the wrong place too. Come Amen. On. Just raise your hand and say, come on. Sometimes, Come on. Sometimes our minds be not on the on the altar. Amen. Amen. <laughs> on the altar in Jesus' name. Come on. So, so we have to make sure where we're trying to focus and why do we want a relationship? And I talk about that a lot in this a course that I uh, created that God gave me called Kingdom Natural Compatibility. And I talk a lot about, you know, the kingdom singles and how we really got to begin to teach them a different approach of dating. And therefore seeking a spouse because we're teaching them like the world teaches them. Mm. And Generation X, and I'm just going to say this, and I'm, I'm going to let you go to the next question, but I know this is going to be loaded what I'm about to say. Anybody <laughs> with Generation X? And let's see. I'm talking about ages about 40 to 55-ish. Y'all know how we were taught. Let's, let's be honest. Come on, a good, a good bulk of us. Let me not say everybody because I do believe that not everybody has the same experience, but when I was in charge, if I'm just keeping it real, we were taught that you wanted a man that was saved as a single woman, but also as a single woman, I was being taught how to make sure I was good in bed. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 Amen on tonight. Come on. because We, we got to keep that real because sometimes we're teaching the singles the same way that the world learns. 
And that's mm -hmm. not it. So just watch where your focus is. You got to know the focus of why you're dating this person. Is it with a God purpose on the relationship? Or is this about you having companionship and passing the time? You mm -hmm. got to that own self be true. So you got to know where you're going to even know if that focus is going to be a problem for you or not. Amen. To thy own self be true indeed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> indeed. So mm -hmm. as a you kind of you kind of answer that, um, but I'm gonna see if you can elaborate a little bit more with this next question. Um, was how to approach the opposite success, op opposite sex relationships yes. when you're saved. Mm. So I uh, like like I'm getting if you meet someone and um he's not of the same cloth and Y'all yeah. are equally yoked off gay. Mm -hmm. Would you like red flag? Mm -hmm. stop? How would you pursue that or not? Well, here's the thing. I think it's totally possible to be friends with the opposite sex. But let me say this. If you're friends with the opposite sex as a saved woman, um, really, to be honest, as any woman, you should really be careful of the intimacy part. Absolutely. Listen, this is what happens. Intimacy builds closeness, right? You've got to be able to put boundaries around the intimacy that you experience with the opposite sex. That's a lot of the time why things get very convoluted and very unnecessarily drama filled la layered. Because what happens is, is we don't know how to regulate or operate in intimacy in a correct way. That's why the Song of Solomon says, don't awaken affection until you are ready. Because as soon as you blow on my ear, as soon as you lift my, my shoulder, come on, as soon as you hold my hand, as soon as you kiss my hand, come on, then you, what's going to happen, right? That's you're right. going to awaken an affection before it's necessarily time, right? So the best thing to do when you're building a relationship with someone of the opposite sex is watch your intimacy. Watch how you're exploring that closeness. Um, be careful of too much alone time. Be careful of too much talk about intimate things that that person couldn't possibly do anything about. And, 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 and be, be very wise in that. Be very wise in what you share. And again, know the purpose of a thing. Why is this person your confidant? Is there a low key, you know, uh, reason to kind of get their attention? You, you, you got to really know the purpose of a thing. Why are you doing it? What are you trying to achieve with it? So friendships are great and they can be wonderful things. It can be a wonderful thing, but we just got to be careful about what we're doing and why we're doing it. That always has to be in focus. Absolutely. Um, and I will be um, transparent at this moment. I'm watching that um, intimate, that a long time. Yeah. You know, especially if you're walking with God, mm -hmm. you've got to watch yeah. as well as pray about a long time because too much can get you trapped off. Yeah. But thank God. Thank God. His mercies are new every morning, yeah. every day. Yeah. Amen. Man, you go, man. So um, this is such a, a blessing to just be encouraged, you know, in this way. And you're helping a lot of people. You're helping a lot of people. Amen. All right. Next question. Why? No, no. I'm going to go with this one. How do you become comfortable with setting boundaries for yourself when it comes to your family life? Mm, that's such a good one. Oh, God, I love family. Listen, um, I think that you get comfortable with setting boundaries when you are certain about what it is that you're setting the boundary for. So let me be let me let me let me bring that home so that won't be so chewy, because normally sometimes what people do to set boundaries is normally to make sure that they don't have to defend something that they really don't want to do. Right. It, 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 you know, boundaries normally sometimes are, are set just to make sure that uh, we don't get taken advantage of. It's, it's a way for protection. Right. And so here's the thing about boundaries. Set them because it is something that you 100 percent wholeheartedly believe in. 
Because most people find themselves setting boundaries and then going back on them because they realize that they can't understand, they can't stand under the weight or the scrutiny of someone coming against them. Right. So the one thing about boundaries in your life is to make sure that you've made up your mind about why this boundary needs to exist. There's nothing wrong with it, but don't create boundaries out of fear. Be very careful with that and really be careful of creating boundaries um, because you are trying to defend yourself. That kind what what needs to happen in that case is that there needs to be more of a definite voice. You need to speak up. There's some things that just need to be decided, right? But be very careful that when you're creating boundaries, they're good, but just be be sure that you're certain about why you're doing it. Absolutely. Be very, be very clear. So that way when anyone comes up against, hey, and try to push up against this boundary, there's not this constant inner fight to say, oh my gosh, am I wrong? Am I right? Because some people set boundaries and then they feel guilt. Right? Am I wrong? Am I right? Should I be doing this? Should I not be doing this? Right? So, so, so make sure that your boundaries are certain. Make sure that they're in mind. They're clearing your mind. They're clearing your heart. Um, you can stand on them, and then no matter what you're doing, where you're going, no matter who it is. And uh, that that they're going to be the same. Come on, make sure they're consistent. Amen. And, and just make sure that you can live with them. Amen. Amen. So I want to take this time. Um, I do have um, one question that was submitted, but if any of you are viewing from the fewer chosen page, that's where I can view the comments at this time. And if you have a question for Lady J Speaks, just um, put it in the fewer chosen comment sections. Uh, the last question, I think that was submitted. Or maybe I have two more. How to stand firm mm -hmm. without putting up walls. Yeah, standing firm without putting up walls, I think is one of the trickiest things because a lot of the time when we're attempting to stand strong is something that we're trying to make sure happens. We, we are again, setting a boundary, right? Mm -hmm. um, we are uh, setting a standard in something. And one of the best ways that I found to stand firm is to be very clear on purpose and intent, right? And, and, and it's not that, you know, Lady J is telling you because it's, 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 it's a real thing. A lot of the time people don't know why they're doing what they're doing. They don't have a full why. They just know they feel uncomfortable. It's a response to a feeling, but there's no clarity on the why, right? So right. really, if you're going to stand firm, be very clear on the why. Right. Um, if you're going to stand firm and um, not have to worry about, hey, does this look weird or does this feel weird? Be certain. Right. Uh, make sure that it's very authentic to who you are. Make sure that you're not um, negotiating and being very inauthentic to where you would normally stand. You know, I've had women who have talked to me and they'll be like, well, I would never, I'm not the kind of woman, for example, that, that would date a married man. Then they find themselves dating a married man. Absolutely. Right? Right. And so this boundary that they were standing firm in, where did that firmness go? And normally it's because they weren't true to who they were. And maybe what should have been stated is I won't date a married man as long as X, Y, and Z. Not that I just wouldn't do it. So sometimes the, the lack of firmness in, a, in standing up is us not knowing really what's on the inside. So get to know yourself, know what it is, know the why, know the purpose, right? And be willing to stand in that. That means that it's not negotiable. Being firm means that there's not a lot of room for negotiation, that you're really sure on your why. So that's super important. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, again, if you have any questions that you would like to ask Lady J. If you are watching from the Fewer Chosen platform, you can submit your question in the comments and I'll be able to see it. Um, the last question that we have that was submitted is how to deal with rejection. Wow, that's a big one. That is, that's a big one. And it's one of my favorite things to really talk about. Um, how do you deal with rejection? Um, I think the very first thing for me in dealing with rejection is acknowledging that it's there, right? 
I think that that's the one thing about rejection sometimes is that it stays hidden so long and so well um, that oftentimes we don't know that it's, that it's actually present, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that the, the best thing with dealing with rejection is being able to acknowledge the fact that it's actually present, acknowledging the fact that it's there. Because once you acknowledge that it's there, then you can deal with the thing. Right. It's when we hide. It's when we run. It's when we evade something. Then we can't we, we can't fully deal with it. Right. Head on. Right. We can't deal with that thing head on. And I'm a person that I believe confrontation is absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. So with rejection requires you to acknowledge that it's present. The second thing is confrontation, right? Being willing, to, being willing to stand flat-footed and say, "Okay, listen, um, I, I, I need, I need to confront where this is coming from, right? Um, deal with the root of it. Once you confront it, and, and you're finding out, hey, where this comes from, then it's time to go on discovery to deal with the root, to get to the root, so you can deal with the root, right? Mm -hmm. So, so when it comes to rejection, the most important point." Is making sure that you know that it's there. But once you know it's there, it's time to go to work. It's time to confront. It's time to do some discovery. And then it's time to deal with the group. Amen. Amen. I love it. I love it. We do have a question. Thank you, Sister Esther McDonald. Her question is, should a saved woman marry a man who openly says mm -hmm. he is not big on church? And you, So you can kind of reiterate. Mm -hmm. Because you, you did tell us a little bit of like a saved woman yeah. that's married to an unsaved man. So this is a single lady asking, should a married woman marry a man who openly says that he's not big on church? It depends. Are you big on church? Just because you say that shouldn't assume that you're big on church. That doesn't mean that. Right. I mean, it really doesn't. And 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 I'm, I'm, I'm asking the question, because how do you feel about church? Is that a deal breaker for you? That's important to know because sometimes we assume that, and I'm not saying this about the person that answered the question. Um, we assume that just because I'm saying that necessarily that's a deal breaker if the person I'm with is not that safe. Mm -hmm. I may be okay with being the one that goes to church every Sunday or every Saturday or whenever we go and you stay home. That may be okay. Right. One, two, it may not necessarily be OK, but it may be something that I'm willing to negotiate on because I want the relationship. Mm -hmm. Right. So I can't just assume in that question. And, and I don't want to, you know, I want to be very respectful. But if that is going on, then I have to ask her, is she big on church mm -hmm. and where are her standards? Absolutely. Right. Where is she landing? Mm -hmm. That's not to bring judgment. But that's so that you can assess what it is that you really want. Because if today it's okay that he's not big on church, when tragedy strikes, is it okay that he's not big on church? Mm. Because it's okay today. Mm -hmm. And that's great. But is it okay next year? Wow. You get what I'm saying? Exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah, those are the kind of questions that, you know, a lot of the time when I'm speaking to single women, um, I have this thing about asking the spirit heart questions, which are the questions that bypass the intellect and get right to the heart of the matter and the spirit of the person. Because you can't just simply, that question, yes, you can answer it directly, but there's so many nuances to consider in that. Mm -hmm. Are you okay with the long haul? Is that sustainable for you? Some people, it is sustainable. That may not be sustainable. Can you sustain a marriage where the other person is not big on God, but you're saved? Mm. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, we're getting some good feedback. So ladies and gentlemen, those of you that are watching, guess what? Lady J Speaks will be in Richmond County in the month of June, I uh, will yes. put the flyer up. But if this is being a blessing to you, I'm going to have her to tell us about um, the workshop and stuff that she's going to be doing. She's coming here. It'll be I know it'll be an awesome time in the Lord. Yes. Um, yes. And I definitely can tell that you're gifted and called 
to help people and how passionate you are. So mm -hmm. I thank you so much mm -hmm. for coming on this platform and sharing and let the people get a feel for you, get to know you. Yeah, yeah. So can well, you tell I, me? I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say I appreciate it, Miss Tanya. I mean, you, you uh, connect. We got connected through Proper Kim and I sincerely appreciate your time and your platform because I don't take it lightly. So thank you. Thank you. Amen. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. It could be constrainable. I've seen some turnaround story. Okay. We got some people that are um, dialoguing in about the question about, you okay. know, she, she married someone that's not big on church. I thought it was a question. So yeah. you're coming in the month of June, June 22nd. We'll put the um, flyer up. You know, let y'all see. Um, can you tell us what that workshop will consist of? Absolutely. Listen, I'm so excited. North Carolina, I am coming June 22nd, 2024. It is going to be the Owning Your Womanhood Workshop, the North Carolina Experience. Listen, this is a vision um, that God has given me. You heard me talk about it at the beginning of the broadcast. But let me bring this experience home to you right now in this moment. My mandate is to begin to change the very fiber of the womanhood of faith. And the change is going to take place by having us do the work. Tanya spoke about it at the beginning of the broadcast, right? And she talked about improving yourself. But I'm, I'm going to take it a step further. I'm going to say I am my brother's keeper. So as God is improving me, then I'm improving the collective, right? And it's been too long that the women in the household of faith have been separated by one thing or another, whether it's rank, whether it's title, whether it's looks, whether it's skin color, and it's time out. We're so powerful in the church, but also that can be a big hindrance if we can't just simply get along. So listen, the Only Your Womanhood workshop is about us doing the work. We can be nice. We can be anointed and we can be cute all at the same time. Amen. Amen. Our beauty does not have to be a threat to one another. We do not have to walk in the household of faith and compete with one another. This Owning Your Womanhood workshop is about breaking down barriers. Amen. Amen. It's about really getting to the heart of the matter. It's about women in the household of faith being able to reconnect, being able to reset how we see another woman walking in the, the door on a Sunday or a Saturday morning or for a Bible study, how we can begin to become welcoming. We can't just simply demote all of our experiences about our friendships from when we grew up, because remember, you were growing up too. Mm. But now that you're a woman, come on. And now that we have grown, we know some things. Come and on. so this Owning Your Womanhood workshop, I'm inviting you out so we can do the work. I'm not just going to talk at you, but we're going to walk this thing out. There are going to be some amazing activities that we're going to go through. We're going to have some much needed conversation. One of the things I'm going to be talking about in my own testimony is God versus good sex. Come on, where I'm going to literally debunk some things. That's why we're saying unapologetically God liberated. Hashtag no more shame because we gonna we gonna learn how to heal together and then we gonna have we gonna learn how not to judge each other's heal. Amen. And we're Amen. gonna learn how to not judge one another. We're gonna learn how to really connect. We're gonna learn how to really put each other on without any expectation. Amen. So Amen. this only the womanhood workshop is about growing up. It's about Titus two and three. It's about teaching those that are coming up and honoring those that have come before and about standing strong with those that are standing strong with you in the moment. Amen. So if you want to help me literally begin to tear down every demonic stronghold in North Carolina, him. Yes. In Jesus name. Jesus. That has separated the women of God. For any reason, I need you to meet me there on June 22nd, 2024. Amen. We've made the tickets super affordable, super affordable. Amen. There's only two ticket tiers, 35 and 50. That's it. We wanted everybody to be able to afford to come. If you do the $35, it's access into the workshop part, which is in the morning. And then that's the only thing you're paying for. The nighttime session is absolutely free. Amen. Amen. $50 ticket, 
You get access into the workshop. Again, nighttime is free. But with that $50 purchase, you get the digital journal, you get a signed CD, you get a t-shirt. So it's going to be amazing. You're going to definitely get your money's worth. So I'm asking you, go to the website, sign up and meet me there. I know I'm on a mission and I know I'm fighting a big demon. And I know that spirit wants to tell everybody that's listening to me that it's all right. It's not that big a deal. It is a big deal. When we have whole ministries that don't speak to each other, it is a big deal. Jesus. When we have churches that won't invite another church because you had a fight with me when we were in fifth grade, it is a big deal. Speak. When there's jealousy in the congregation, it is a big deal. When I can't speak to you, it is a big deal. When I can't say your name, it is a big deal. Mm -hmm. We say we're women of God. So our standard has to be different. And if it doesn't start with us dealing with our issues in the body of Christ, then how are we going to teach the world? Amen. Because we're looking just like them. Amen. Wow. Amen. So this is a big initiative. And I need you to help me and come stand with me. Absolutely. You here in Houston, Texas, North Carolina, I need you to stand up and reclaim your city and air it out in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Apostle Keisha Mag, hello, woman of God. Thank you for joining. She says, you're talking good. This is so true. <laughs> Big facts. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. And I am excited. I am excited. Definitely. You know, everything you said that need to be addressed and as Gen X, you know, some people within Gen X are already walking into their godly purpose, you know, in their their pumps. And then some of us, we're still it's time for us to grow up. Yeah, it's time for us to grow up. And um, because we're up, we're up next. And, you know, it's our time to walk in purpose. So I, I love that. Um, Y'all, please, a lady posted um, the link where you can go to the link um, and see more information on this uh, workshop. Yeah. Thank you, Alan Hunter. Thank you, Apostle Hunter. He actually put a link up. Um, I'm not too good with StreamYard. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there, woman of God, uh, where yeah. I could pin it. But the information is in the comments yeah. um, on Fewer Chosen. Yeah. I definitely know for sure. So please, Richmond County, surrounding counties, neighboring counties, come check out this awesome anointed force. And let's iron sharpens iron. Come on. Let's adjust each other's crowns. Yeah. Let's laugh together. Let's cry together. Let's build together. Let's grow together and receive these kingdom jewels that this awesome woman of God is dropping on us. You have given us some rich, rich, rich tea tonight, and we thank you. Thank you. Listen, to God be the glory. I, I Listen, I'm telling you, you know, Tanya, I, I just have to say, uh, Minister, thank you so much. And um, you were so welcoming uh, with just opening up your platform, and you didn't have to. And that's what only your womanhood is. We take responsibility, not just for the God assignment that's on our life, but the God assignment that's on someone else's and what we could do to make that, um, to help that go further. And so thank you for taking responsibility just a little bit for my calling and sharing um, what I have to give or what you have. And so thank you. That's the very epitome of owning our womanhood. You did it on an individual level and you're doing it on a collective level because if it wasn't a collective level, I wouldn't be here. So thank you very much. And, 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 and I, I'm, I'm just I'm so excited for what God is going to do. And I'm excited to meet each and every one of you. Hug your neck. High five you in the Lord. And let's all get slain in the Holy Ghost together in Jesus name. Amen. In Jesus. I'm ready. Amen. And this is one thing that um, I, I've always loved encouraging people, you know, especially those that have, you know, the call of God on their life. Yeah. You know, we're not just looking at one individual because iron does sharpen iron. Okay. You know, 
everybody's not called to my voice. Amen. Everybody is not called to my voice. And to just be a part of that kingdom building. Yeah. I am here for it. So the, again, the information and the link where you can go um, and register is in the comments of on um, Few Are Chosen. Amen. So woman of God, um, if you would, you would, I would ask you to sing because I sing you're a songstress too. Okay, listen. listen. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to have to come to the workshop to sing. <laughs> No, no, what it is is that I'm a spoken word artist. I'm a okay, spoken okay, okay, okay. I'm a poet. I'm a poet. Yes, poet. Okay, okay. You have to throw in performance poet. Yes, ma'am. Oh, wow. That is awesome. Yes. yes. That is awesome. We have a poet, an author, uh, awesome woman of God who's here to be an instrument for God yes. to build the body of Christ, to uplift women, yes. and to charge us to own our womanhood. Stand firm in your pumps. <laughs> I love that. Right. Stand firm in so your hard. pumps. And if you can't wear pumps, stand firm in your kitty heels. Okay. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And listen, I'm going to even say, don't even worry about the instrument that God is using. Sometimes we get hung up on that. Listen, I'm just asking you to come stand for the household of faith. We as women of God, it's just time for us to deal with some things. Amen. And so I, I again, I thank you. I can't wait. I'm excited about June 22nd, North Carolina. I'm so excited about being there. This is my first time there. I was asked to bring the Only Your Womanhood workshop there. And so I'm so excited for the invitation through Prophet Kim. And so I'm so, so, so excited. So shout out to Prophet Kim to say, hey, my county needs this. And you you need to get out here, Lady J. So thank you so, so, so much to her. Thank you. Definitely a shout out to you, Kim. Yes. I love it. I, I yes. love it. And we thank you so much. Um, and a, another thing that's on your flyer that I seen that yes. I'm so ready to hear you elaborate on is that pain and anger uh, has yes. a behavior. Yes, it does. I know that it's going to be very, very, very rich. So, woman of God, would you do the honors of praying us out? Absolutely. I would love it. And also, thank you to Pastor Quick. Let me not forget that. But yes. this is Pastor Quick's church. Amen. So he volunteered his church. And so I'm so excited. All day Saturday, come spend time with us. So let's pray. And I'll let you all go for the night. Thank you so much for tuning in. Father, we thank you on today for being God all by yourself. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for being Jehovah Jireh, Father God, for being Emmanuel, for being El Rohi. Father, we ooh, Father, we thank you on tonight in the name of Jesus for being God that is so good. Father, I'm asking right now in Jesus' name, Father, that this broadcast will just continue to plant seeds. Father, that it will continue to encourage, that it will continue to uplift, that it will continue to cover, it will continue to challenge, it will continue to console, it will continue to love on. It'll continue to impart wisdom. Father, we thank you right now for the woman of God and her platform. We ask, Father, Lord God, that we speak abundance and increase on it in Jesus' in name. Jesus and into the stratosphere. So, Father, we thank you right now for covering her. We thank you, Lord God, for her heart, for the women of God, and for the kingdom, the household of faith. And, Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for what you're doing in her life and what you're about to do. We thank you for the awesome equipping that's happening right now, even as I speak, we thank you for the enrichment. We thank you for the growth. We thank you right now in Jesus' name for the confidence and the courage. I hear it on tonight. And so, Father, we honor you in this moment and we give you praise. Bless every man and woman that was under the sound of my voice. God, I thank you that something that was said gave clarity. It broke off the assignment of the enemy. It stopped it dead in its tracks. It exposed lies and brought truth and understanding and insight. So, Father, we thank you for what you've done and what you're going to do. So even as June 22nd approaches, God begin to do only what you can do. Let them hear it, Father God, and breathe. Bond. And Father, we thank you already in advance for being in the place. It is in Jesus' name that we speak and we say that it is so and it cannot be otherwise. It amen. Is. Amen. 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 Thank you, woman of God. Can you tell the people uh, how to find you, what social platforms you're on? 
Yes, ma'am. I'm on TikTok under Lady J Speaks, just like it's spelled there. Um, you can also find me on Instagram, same, uh, same handle, and then on Facebook, same handle. Amen. Um, if you want to uh, take a look at any of the um, other uh, events or anything else that I may have coming up, it's on our church website at dapmeninternational.com. That's D-A-P-M-I-N international.com. Amen. Amen. So I am just I want to say thank you again as well. And to give a, a big shout out to my pastor, I want to honor my bishop, Bishop Lomiel Stroman and Lady Ada Stroman, co-pastor. I thank God for them. So if you're in the area, you need a church home or if you just want to visit Sunday service is at 11 a.m. on 122 Jackson Street in Ellaby, North Carolina. You're all mm -hmm. welcome. I also want to give a shout out and thank you to my big sister in Christ, Apostle Tammy Ratliff. I, I will always honor and thank you, woman of God, because you don't know what our connection and the destiny helper you are to me. Wow. Um, she's having an event also. Um, her spiritual parents will be coming to celebrate her, her ministry Amen. Esther and her. Hold on, let me see. I don't want to. I don't want to watch it up, but I want to give her her flowers. Let me see. But I thank God for her. She is, and we're gonna say congratulations to her as well. She got her doctorate of ministry. Amen. Amen. Graduation ceremony will be May twenty fifth, twenty twenty four. The time and the place is TBA. Um, I'll be promoting it on all my um, platforms as well. Um, and I'm excited for her. And I thank God for her. She was a, a intricate part, an intricate part of pushing me into God's purpose and to come out of that and owning my womanhood. So I thank God for all of you that are watching. I uh, thank y'all for tuning in. And remember the link for now is in the fewer chosen comments. I will be at everybody. So get ready. Whenever we get, <laughs> I get off of here. <laughs> oh God, we're gonna spread the gospel. We're gonna lift each other up. So again, woman of God, thank you to everyone that tuned in and stayed to the end or catching the replay. May God bless you richly and keep you. We thank you for joining us and have a good rest of your evening, even though it's cold in North Carolina. <laughs> Amen. Amen.